Hi, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Jayant Sharma. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that uh, photographers who use higher ISOs or maybe have cameras which are not capable of handling higher ISOs in low light scenarios, they uh, crib about a problem that arises, which is noise. Uh, so basically noise is nothing but grains in your image. I'm sure most of you who do photography know this. But I think noise occupies a lot of attention in our minds. In other words, I feel noise has a lot of noise. So uh, I have never been somebody who is worried about noise for a long, long time. Uh, perhaps, to be fair, there are two reasons for that. One is I use um, cameras which are top of the line, which produces relatively less, less noise. Um, also, on the other hand, I probably have developed an acceptance to some level of noise, but I believe that's not the case with many of uh, photography enthusiasts. Also, because of using higher ISOs like 6,000, 4,000, 5,000 ISOs on wildlife safaris in uh, evenings or let's say early mornings with lenses which are f5.6, f6.3 and the likes, the chances of you getting noise is a lot more than me getting noise with a f2.8 or a f4 or whatever, even if you have um, um, lenses which are smaller aperture lenses, that is. So um, without really um, caring too much about what my use case is, I'd like to talk about this particular uh, feature, which is um, denoise. Basically, denoise is a filter you apply to an image in order to get rid of noise. So one of the most important softwares in the recent times is the Topaz Labs who have come up with the multiple software which helps post-processing using artificial intelligence and helps photographers get the best out of their pictures. One of that is Denoise AI, which is a tool which has been um, immaculate. It's been, it's been exemplary and that's what many people have been using in the recent times. So Topaz Denoise, it's an expensive suite of software, uh, probably $150 if you want to buy it, uh, comes with one year of free upgrade and after that of course the software is perpetual but the upgrades may uh, need subscription. But anyway, so let's understand what is Topaz Denoise. Um, I have basically uh, a picture which I have shot recently, where is that? It's uh, on my screen here. So let's copy that to my desktop just to make sure I have um, pasted it somewhere here. And now I want to open the Topaz Denoise software. As you can see, this is Topaz Denoise. It's 3.7.0, uh, 3.7.0. And I'm just going to open the image which is on my desktop. And uh, of course it is here. Um, and I'm just going to open this image to show you how this image looks like. So first of all, I'm going to show you the original single view image. It's applied a standard denoise filter to it. And um, what we can do is compare it with two different filters. One is the original with, of course, the standard. As you can see, in these areas, I'd like to magnify this and show you later on. In these areas, there's a lot of noise and I'd like to get rid of that. So let's do a before and after comparison of the original and, of course, the denoised uh, state. So this is something I'm sure all of you who use Topaz already do. In fact, it has this filter which uh, allows you to simulate four different kinds of compression and denoise effects applied on this image and you can basically select whatever suits your needs. Uh, so let's say I am happy with the standard and I'd like to go with the standard for sure and I'm just going to save this image. Now the thing is you can save this image in any folder you want and this is a standalone application called the Topaz Denoise. So let me just save this here. It applies a uh, um, what can I say? It, it uh, modifies the file name with denoise AI standard. It also tells me what kind of a noise filter has been applied to this. It also uh, puts the denoise um, label to this. It's a prefix or rather the suffix. And then you can select where you want to save this. And I'm going to save this in a custom location, which is basically on my desktop itself. Maybe I will save it right next to this so that we can quickly see the image. So the moment I save this, let's go to my desktop. It's almost done. On my desktop, this was the original image. This is the denoised image. Let me magnify this and show you. It's the denoised image, which of course looks uh, a little better than this one. Let's compare the two. I'll just hold these two images and basically probably show you how this and this looks like. There's a lot of difference in the grains, in the noise, in the background area, which was low lit. So this is something which many of you are, are already doing. But how about coexisting with Lightroom and Denoise together. So I basically am an advocate of Lightroom as many of you know. So I have just put this one single raw file, it's a Sony raw file on my collection called the Denoise collection. So I am going to try and uh, see if I can denoise this image and see how 
these grains that you can see in the background misty morning in bandhogarh national park let's see how these grains may um, be removed using uh, denoise so one of the ways people do is they export this image they take that image out to your explorer or your windows uh, explorer or your finder in mac and then open denoise as a standalone application and work on that having said that if you go to your denoise software and if you go to help you can actually install the photoshop plugin um which actually allows us to use denoise inside of photoshop or lightroom itself so here i have right clicked and i said edit in and i can right now edit in topaz denoise from Li lightroom's library itself so let's open the topaz denoise it asks you to take some decisions this is a dialog it says edit a copy with lightroom adjustments which is what i want to do because i'm opening this with lightroom now one of the things which people do is they select the tiff file and of course uh, color space you can select adobe rgb or pro photo rgb i think since most of you may uh, not have the monitors to support these color profiles let's stick to srgb or a adobe rgb if you are posting pictures on the um, internet like let's say facebook instagram and the likes uh, please remember resolution is important because you're no longer working on a raw file you're going to export that to a 300 dpi uh, a tiff file according to this and edit this so when i say edit it opens this software in uh, topaz denoise itself it will take a few seconds to open that and once that happens um it's loaded this image now in the topaz denoise so right now i'm not in lightroom this is lightroom where is lightroom this is lightroom but it has opened topaz denoise in um you know uh, with the draw file on this and let's see how to work on this so if you can see this uh, comparison view i'm going to do original with of course i'm going to apply two different kinds of uh, noise filters to that you can see how the noise here versus the noise here has taken uh, effect in fact there's not much noise here at all that's even a standard filter if you want you can change the ai model and select different kinds of filters like low light filter it's going to apply this and show you this may even be okay for this image so this is how you denoise an image mind you this is an original and this is a modified image and now i can apply this and if i save this image then it will be a tiff file so let's just go ahead and do that i am applying this and probably i want to see where it says this so it's finished uh, processing and once it's done the tiff file is going to be saved in lightroom right next to my lightroom's raw file if you look at this it's a tiff file and this is a raw file So look at the noise, especially in this area where my mouse pointer is, and look at the noise here. It's completely clean of noise, right? This is the beauty of Topaz denoise. Now let's look at what happened to this TIFF file. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and say Show in Finder. It's created a TIFF file here, right next to the raw file. Nine three eight is the raw file. Nine three eight hyphen edit is the TIFF file. But uh, an important thing to note here is the raw file was about thirty nine MB. and the tiff file is 98.4 mb guys so many people cannot sustain a 90 100 mb raw file uh, i mean uh, a tiff file after they convert a raw file of 40 mb so my picture was shot in i think an alpha 74 if i'm not wrong let's me let me just check the camera uh, where's the camera details here it's a 7000 by 4000 forza 28 this is a 32 33 megapixel image which is alpha 74 so i basically um cannot sustain a 100 mb for every picture that i edit if i just denoise it what am i doing to this picture just denoising it but what's the solution guys so i can go back to this raw file again and this is a raw file uh, mind you i can right click on this and say edit in topaz denoise and the most important decision i need to take here is i don't want the tiff why do you need the tiff the tiff is a file size which has a lot more data in fact in this um, instance it had three times the data of the raw file um uh, which is not required for us if you are using images for the web so jpeg edit uh, with the same pro photo or adobe rgb or even srgb for that matter because you are posting it on the web resolution is important 300 dpi and when i say edit it's just going to populate the denoise software with this image and as usual we'll just go to the same noise filter and apply what we wanted to do so that we can now check the difference in um what can i say the image before and after low light is what i've selected this is the original this is the uh, processed denoised section i'm just going to apply this and as soon as i apply this it's going to save a copy of this with dot jpg mind you not dot tiff like it was in the past once it does finishing um uh, the noise uh, uh, processing it's going to save this image and open it in lightroom if you just double click or open it in one is to one you'll see there's absolutely no noise at all so there are three images this is perhaps my jpeg this is probably my tiff and this is probably my 
um, raw file. So let's do one thing. Let's go to the center of all the three images just to compare how it fared with respect to the knee noise that this is a JPEG. I'm just going to keep the tiger in the same place. And if I just keep moving between the three, this is the raw file. As you can see, extremely noisy in the background, misty morning. This is the TIFF file and this is the JPEG file. So I'm just going to try and see if I can show the same area in all the three so that you know, you can see how this is the TIFF file and this is the JPEG file. Honestly, a lot of people think TIFF is great. It's a lot of data. They may need such data, but I think they are overdoing it because if they are putting pictures on the inst on Instagram and Facebook and social media, they don't really need that kind of data, guys. So this is basically a TIFF. This is basically a JPEG, which serves my purpose. So now you can just simply go to the finder, find this JPEG, and it's already a JPEG. And look at the file size now, guys. It's 8.9 MB. The raw file was 39 MB. The TIFF file was 98 MB. The JPEG is 8.9 MB. I did an experiment. In fact, uh, let's go to this image here. Look at this image, which was the original, and look at the file size of this image. It's 4.5 MB. And look at the file size of this image. It is basically uh, 3.4 MB. So what does this tell you that once you reduce noise from a JPEG, um, it's going to clear a lot more data because noise also occupies data in the file. So a denoised image from Topaz is much more optimized than even an image which has come out of RAW and directly converted to a JPEG. So this is fantastic. Uh, I highly recommend Topaz denoise if you are um, you know, cluttered in your mind with the noise. Uh, noise. Uh, I personally don't care about noise as much, but if I really happen to need an image which requires to be properly processed, going to print, there needs to be no noise at all, then Topaz Denoise is my go-to software. And most importantly, guys, don't forget, you can work with Topaz Denoise from Lightroom itself, and while you are taking it to Topaz, you can tell Lightroom to not do a RAW, I mean, not do a TIFF, but do a JPEG, thus save a lot of file size. I hope that was useful. Please let me know in your comments if noise is a problem, if you um, use Topaz Denoise and what's your workflow, if there's something I'd like to learn, that'll be really great. Otherwise, if you feel this was a great lesson, please share this, like this, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, I don't have to, uh, have to ask you to subscribe to this channel. I would really be grateful if you can do that. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.